The Price Academy, bite-sized history videos. This video is introducing Richard Roos, the Tudor cook boiled to death. On April the 5th, 1531, a group of London spectators gathered at Smithfield, joined by others who were too curious to stay away. An execution was to take place of a type that none had witnessed in their lifetimes, nor ever heard of. The condemned man, Richard Roos, was to be boiled alive. Roos was not the usual criminal that would normally meet his end at Smithfield, located just beyond the London Wall. He was convicted of high treason, yet he had not set out to harm King Henry VIII or his Queen Catherine of Aragon, or any royal councillor. He had not tried to overthrow the kingdom's government. Roos, a cook, was accused of murder by poison. Ruse's two victims were an unheard gentleman in the household of Bishop John Fisher, Bennett Kerwin, and a destitute widow who accepted the bishop's charity, Alice Tippett. The target of the poisoning was assumed to be Fisher himself, the Bishop of Rochester. Strangely, Fisher did not eat the soup, sometimes described as pottage, that Ruse had prepared, and so was unharmed. Ruse admitted to the poisoning, but claimed it was a joke gone wrong, an accident. There is no testimony for us to examine, because Ruse had no trial, by command of the king. In the words of the Grey Friars Chronicle of London, a contemporary document, this year was a cook boiled in a cauldron in Smithfield, for he would have poisoned the Bishop of Rochester Fisher with divers of his servants, and he was locked in a chain and pulled up and down with a gibbet at divers' times until he was dead. Why did Henry VIII demand this punishment of a lowly cook? Why was Roos executed as a traitor when his crime was murder of commoners? The answer lies in the king's complicated feelings for Bishop Fisher. John Fisher was made Bishop of Rochester by the King's father, Henry VII, in 1504. Fisher performed the funeral services for Margaret Beaufort, the King's mother, and King Henry VII himself when they died within months of each other. In the first 20 years of the reign of Henry VIII, Fisher was said to be the greatest Catholic theologian in Europe without any rival. But by the time of the crime in question, King Henry was no longer proud of Bishop Fisher, who was 62 years of age. In fact, he considered him an enemy, and it would have made the king's life much easier if Fisher had at the soup and died. By 1527, Henry VIII was desperate for a male heir, and he began his public quest for an annulment from the 42-year-old Catherine of Aragon to marry Anne Boleyn. John Fisher, however, became one of his most serious obstacles as he took the side of Catherine of Aragon. He said the marriage was legal and could not be dissolved. Enter one Richard Roos. After this, the bishop escaped a very great danger, for one Richard Roos came into the bishop's kitchen being acquainted with the cook at his house in Lambeth Marsh and having provided a quantity of deadly poison. While the cook went into the buttery to fetch him some drink, he took his opportunity to throw that poison into a mess of gruel which was prepared for the bishop's dinner. And after he had waited there a while, he went on his way. But it so happened that when the bishop was called into his dinner, he had no appetite for any meat, but wished his servants to fall to and be of good cheer. 
and that he would not eat till towards night. And they that did eat of the poison dish were miserably infected. And whereof one gentleman named Mr. Bennet Kerwin, an old widow, died suddenly, and the rest never recovered their health till their dying day. An inquiry began at once, and Roos was soon apprehended. He admitted to adding what he believed were laxatives to the soup as a jest. No one believed him. They say that the cook, having been immediately arrested, confessed at once that he had actually put into the broth some powders, which he had been given to understand would only make his fellow servants very sick, without endangering their lives or doing them any harm. I have not yet been able to understand who it was who gave the cook such advice, nor for what purpose. Sir Thomas More informed Henry VIII that there were rumours that Anne Boleyn and her father and brother Thomas and George Boleyn were involved in the poisoning attempt. The king reacted angrily, saying Anne Boleyn was unfairly blamed for everything. The murder motive and the question of a larger plot were soon obscured by Henry VIII's drastic actions. He decided that Ruth should be condemned by attainer without a trial, a measure usually used for criminals who are at large. But at this point, Ruth was sitting in prison. Parliament passed an act for poisoning, making willful murder by means of poison high treason, even if the victim was not head of the government of the land, and boiling to death became a form of legal capital punishment. In April, the crowds of Smithfield witnessed Roos's death. According to an eyewitness, he roared mighty loud, and women who were big with child did feel sick at the sight of what they saw, and were carried away half dead, and other men and women did not seem frightened by the boiling alive, but would prefer to see the headsman at his work. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, to like and subscribe to the channel, or follow me at Twitter or at Facebook at TanyaRelics38.